Every time I set up my journal for the month ahead, I want it to be the best setup possible. I want to have all of the layouts that I'm going to need or find helpful in the month. I want the structure of those to lend themselves to actually being used. I want it to be decorative in a way that's aesthetically pleasing so I actually get into my journal, but I don't want it to be too overwhelming for me to do, either in the initial setup or as the month progresses. This can be a bit of a tall order though, so what process do I use to make all of those things happen? Well, that's what we're going to look at today. So how do I plan my monthly setup before I actually get into my journal to set it up? If you're going to do this process with me, you're going to need a pen and some kind of scrap paper. I'm just using this grid spiral notebook. But the first thing that I like to do is kind of go through the month as a whole, or the pages that I've set up for the current month, and consider what worked or what did I like, and what didn't work or what did I not like. You don't actually have to write this down on the paper, I just prefer to, in part because then it's a visual for you to kind of see how the process works, and also so that I have all of my notes captured on a piece of paper. Keeping them in my head can be a little bit difficult when it comes to analyzing the information. I'm just writing this down in two separate columns, so one for the things that I liked and that worked, and then a separate column for the things that I didn't like or didn't work. You can tackle this by just doing an initial brainstorm to get any of your thoughts out, so if there's anything that's floating around in your head before you kind of get into flipping through your notebook, you can jot that down so that then it's not kind of sitting up there stuck just waiting to come down on the paper. Mainly because if you keep those ideas in your head while you're flipping through, you're not really going to be able to focus on the page that you're actually looking at. Or at least not completely. It's kind of like when you have that task niggling in the back of your mind saying, oop, you gotta do this, you gotta do this. It makes it hard to focus on other things because you don't want to forget that niggling task. For me, I've just got the one that I want to write down. This is actually something that didn't really work out, but it was the use of my monthly log versus my kind of weekly pages or fortnightly setup, and where in particular I was putting events down. I've put this down as monthly and weekly because I'm actually doing cyclic planning and fortnightly planning, but for the majority of people who do monthlies with weeklies, that's the kind of terminology that you'd probably use. When it comes to writing down the things that worked and didn't work or the things I liked and didn't like, I'm not just thinking about the structural elements or the decorative elements, I'm really trying to think about everything. So not just the decoration and maybe the structure of the layouts, but also my use of them, or which pages did I get into and actually check in with, which ones maybe didn't get as much use, which ones do I feel are still useful but maybe the actual kind of structure of them needs to be changed, were there any things I put in here that either saved me time or made my journaling more enjoyable, anything like that. But we like to start at the start, so flipping back, thinking about the actions list. So I like having the actions list, we can put that down. But something I didn't like is that the actions list wasn't really complete before the month started. I kind of just put in some initial things that needed to get done, rather than everything I maybe hoped to get done over the cycle. You can note that that's not necessarily about the initial setup of my pages, but more so about how I used them, or what actually got filled in and when it got filled in. Something else that I didn't like so much about the actions list is that because it was incomplete, there was a lot of white space, and white space is something that I don't enjoy so much in my journal. And I also feel like the placement of the decoration was a little bit awkward. It didn't feel as intentional. And this is actually something that came out of this setup as a whole, because I had initially planned on doing a different theme and going a different route with it, so this one was kind of like a build as you go in a way. Not completely, but it did mean that it wasn't quite as intentionally thought out as I typically like to do. Now you can see I'm starting to build up quite a list of things I don't like or that didn't really work, and we don't want this to be an opportunity to kind of like hate on ourselves or get really down on ourselves. We do also want to think about the things we like. Often it's a little bit easier to pick out the things that aren't working or we don't like, because most of us have a little bit of a negativity bias, but we can also learn things from the stuff we liked as well. So for instance, I thought it was really nice having the washi stickers as decoration, mainly because they made the kind of setup process quite quick and easy, and the printed headers also added to that too. I like the effect of the torn paper edge and also the contrast between the white, the red, and the black. And I also liked the simple headers that we had for different sections, so just putting down the dot with the dot marker, which is easy to do, and then using that kind of cursive that isn't my typical cursive, but it's one that I've started using quite a lot in my journal, so that was nice as well. Thinking about the cover page, so the cover page is not necessarily something that's particularly functional, I really just like to have it as a way to kind of section out or kind of cap off the start of a new cycle, or for most people a new month. I know a couple people mentioned 
mentioned that this reminded them of a Pokeball and I completely see it. So if you took the fish out and just made this a little bit more circular, very much a Pokeball theme. But something that I liked from this one was the faux Dutch door, or effectively the way that it kind of looks like this part is a Dutch door, and I guess in a way it is, except for the fact that the paper that I've put here is stuck to that page rather than the page below it. And while I do typically like a cyclic design on the cover page, this one isn't actually central because I needed to make space to have the calendar on the next page, so it needed to be moved over a little bit or made kind of a lot bigger. And I also wish I had have kept the torn edge for this white piece of paper here too, because we have the tear going through the black, but then the white is a kind of crisp solid line. And that was mainly so that then the crisp solid line around the fish didn't look kind of out of place. It is a very small thing and it is pretty specific to this cycle or this cover page. So I'm not gonna write it down because this is really notes for next cycle. So I guess it's good to note that you don't have to write every single thought down on your paper. The majority of them can be helpful. Like this might be helpful to think about next time I do a cover page like this, but I'm probably not gonna do the same kind of cover page for cycle three, so. Flipping over, the next layout we have is the cycle two overview, or effectively what would be the monthly log for most people. Now, I liked having the monthly log. I again think that the placement of the stickers wasn't necessarily very well thought out, but we've already captured that on our paper. And so far this month, I have had mixed use of it, but I do like having it here. So we can note down that I like having it because it kind of gives me an overview, funnily enough, of the entire cycle. But something that was a little difficult is that because all of these dots are the same, you can't really differentiate between events, appointments, and then other going ons. For instance, my reels that I was putting out each day or have been trying to. Those aren't so much an event, they're something that I schedule ahead of time. So maybe they could go in with a different color or possibly with an icon, something like that. I liked being able to check them off with a little check mark. So I think maybe a colored dot that's a different color to the events might be useful, but we'll put down distinguishing between the two. This is also where the first point comes in. So event logging here versus event logging on my weeklies or my fortnightly setups. So whether I put those on here or only left them on here, but then I wasn't flipping back to this layout. So it got a little bit messy. I again liked using the color paper for decorating though I do feel like the overall layout of this page could have been tweaked a little bit, possibly by making each of these boxes one space taller, and then maybe having like a rotated title or a stacked title rather than a banner. Those are only possibilities though, so rather than adding them to my liked or worked or didn't like didn't work, I'm going to put this down the bottom in a section that I'm going to call try. So things that I might want to try out or ideas that I have for the month ahead. In particular, I think that having the taller boxes for each of the days of the month is just going to be a little bit nicer for when it comes to those days that are particularly full. Another point that I'm thinking is maybe I want to split the content releases and the events. I know I wanted to have them on here so I could see everything together, but often when it came to thinking about my releases for content, I was looking here instead, but these ones don't have dates associated with them. So it's something that needs to be tweaked or changed. I'm just not sure how yet. So rather than putting that in the try or ideas space, I'm going to put that in the needs. Effectively, I need to have an overview so I know when everything is happening, but I also want a distinct content list that's just related to releases. And as part of that, I don't want there to be too much duplicate information because that leads to things getting lost or missed or just having like way too much to write in or check off. So it's something that needs further consideration. But continuing this process, something I didn't like so much is the varied use of the monthly log, but this has been a pretty consistent problem for me. So it's not one that I'm particularly worried about. I know that the monthly log has its benefits. I just haven't found a way that really works for making sure I'm very consistent with using it. In terms of my work outputs, so the actual title of this one is something that's a little new. I liked the title of that, so I'm gonna add that to my liked list, mainly because they're not necessarily all content releases, or at least, not all of them plan to be. I will say that it is only halfway through the month or cycle at the moment, so there is still a chance I use this, I just haven't used it yet. Something that I didn't like so much about this was that I wrote down all of the things I was going to post on Instagram and then promptly decided that I was going to do a reels challenge instead, so all of these got written in but wasn't actually what I ended up doing. I also didn't necessarily have enough space for the blog post section. And I'm gonna note down this right hand page only because I haven't used it yet. It might end up that it works really well, but 
At the moment, not so much. Things that do typically work though are the Alistair method for the kind of videos section and the Instagram section, where each of these icons represents one stage in making that piece of content. And then I just check it off as they happen. But something that I really enjoyed doing and I would like to bring back is rather than just checking this off with a little check mark, instead writing in the date that I intend to do that thing and then using a dot marker over the top. So this is something I can write down in the try or ideas section. Obviously a work outputs layout like this, like specifically like this, is a little bit more kind of niche and very much related to my line of work. But with whatever you're organizing, whether that be for work or for home, you could do a similar type of thing with any other kind of project-based work. So a series of outputs that has similar steps to do each of them. When are you going to do each of those steps for each of those pieces of work? So if we're thinking teaching, that might be like lessons for a particular unit and the different stages of planning the lessons. If you're in a line of work where you have to write a lot of reports or documents, then that could be each of the individual report pieces or whatnot, and then the stages of writing those. Very much depends on what you do, but those are just a couple of examples. One thing that I will say did work for this page, even though didn't necessarily work out the way I wanted to, was writing down all of the pieces of content. I really like having the complete list here so I know exactly what's happening, even though I ended up very promptly changing the plan. I would like something like this. Notably, we're starting to get quite a bit of writing on this list, and as said, you don't actually have to write it out. I'm just writing it out so you can kind of see what my thought process is when I'm going through all of these pages. But flipping over, then we have my weekly or more so fortnightly setups. So this is one where we have one week and the next, and then after this, on the other side of the Dutch door, we've got my trackers. Now this layout worked quite well in January or in cycle one, but for this fortnight in particular, I was away for the second half. So this entire week, I wasn't there. And in this week, I was really busy preparing for this one. So I put a sticky note in, just wrote to myself, went to Melbourne in week six. So a lot of this went unused didn't check in with this journal at all. Mainly so that if I ever go back and look at these pages, I don't kind of get down on myself being like, wow, Jess, you set up your planner, you didn't even use it. Like, I effectively gave myself a pass here. So I suppose one of the things that didn't work so much was not necessarily planning for how I typically tackle my journal when I'm away, which is that I don't. So not accounting for away time. And also not necessarily taking into account how my planning style changes when I'm busy. I will say though, I again liked the simple decoration of having the washi stickers, and also in my dailies as well. I know we're not specifically looking at those right here, but it follows on from the point. In terms of the tracker page though, it would have been nice if I had have utilized these more so I could get a better kind of idea of what worked or didn't. In particular, my fortnightly actions, the idea for this was to bring items over from the actions list the ones in particular that I wanted to work on during this fortnight. But because I was busy and because I was away, I didn't end up doing any actions during the fortnight. As mentioned before, it is kind of early in the month to be doing this process. We're only about halfway through the month at this stage. So in terms of the fortnightly pages and then the daily pages, I don't have as much to write as I do for the other ones, but I wanted to show you this process in preparation for the new month. So if you want to do something similar yourself, you have a little bit of time to figure out which elements you want to take. Something that I continue to enjoy though are the daily logs in general, and also what I call micro collections. So these are just little collections that I put in amongst the daily logs. So for instance, the Patreon or kind of memberships list, and then the YouTube list of things to make for the channel, and then also a little go wild page ideas list, and then of course my packing list. So just sprinkling those in amongst my dailies, I enjoy that. So far for this fortnight, I mean I'm only three days into it, but I've kind of parred down a little bit. I've only got a habit tracker, not my kind of meal log and other trackers. And I have the same kind of daily boxes that I had for the fortnightly setup. I haven't used enough of this yet to really get a feel for what works or doesn't, but I am enjoying it so far. And then after this, I've changed up my dailies to do just an Alistair style method. So a column for each of the remaining days of the week, and then one that says N either for next week, so if there's anything that I know I want to do next week in particular, or for notes. We'll see which one comes up first, but this style I've actually been liking, but it is also only the very first day, or supposedly like half day, that I've started using it. So I'll note it down as something that I've liked, but it's not necessarily something that's worked yet because I don't have enough data to say that it has worked. 
that kind of makes sense. Now, while the liked and worked list and the didn't like or didn't work list is something that I like to do by actually going through the pages, when it comes to the needs and then the try or ideas, this one only gets kind of briefly touched as I go through. It's more so that idea of like, as I have thoughts, I wanna capture them, write them down so that then they don't escape my mind or kind of, you know, make it so I can't think about other things. But now as we're in the next stage of that pre-planning process, this is where those two start to get a little bit more playtime. So thinking about the month ahead, what are my specific needs for the month? Is there anything in particular that's coming up in the month that I'm gonna need to have a collection that helps me organize it or some kind of layout that helps me the planet or just capture ideas or whatever else. And then are there any kind of thoughts or musings about other stuff that I might want to include? So any collections or layouts that I might have seen online that I want to try out for myself? Any kind of problem areas that need a layout to address them? Anything like that, but it's pretty much about brainstorming. So in terms of needs in the month coming up, this is gonna be the last cycle of the quarter or the third month in the first quarter. So I'm gonna to need to start thinking about the idea of an end of quarter wrap up. As part of this, there might be some projects that I wanna plan. So maybe uh, letting people in to my course as founding members. I am hoping to do that at some point in March. And I've also just recently kicked off a podcast with Mark of Mark Your Pages. So I might need to have some pages related to that. If you haven't already checked that one out, that is the Planner Pals podcast. Our first episode went up yesterday and it's linked in the description box below if you want to go check it out. In this need section, this is where I'd start thinking about like, are there any trips that I'm taking? So do I need like a packing list? Are there any particular events that I'm planning or going to that need to have things done for them? Goals, projects, anything like that. At this stage, my list is looking okay. So it's time to start thinking about anything that I want to try or any ideas that I have for the month ahead. This could be in terms of functional stuff or it could be in terms of decoration. And and one big thing that I want to do is keep my decorations simple and fully plan things out before I put pen to paper. So having the structure of those in my journal and pencil ahead of time so that we don't have the same kind of mishaps that I had in setting up for cycle two. As mentioned, it is only a little over halfway through the cycle. So this list isn't complete. I'm gonna have a couple more ideas before we get to the end of the cycle. But from here, I wanna take all of these pieces of information and start to make a plan for what I'm going to include in the next month or the next cycle. So thinking about all of the points that I've written down, what layouts do I want to include? What structure do I want those layouts to have? What types or styles of decoration do I want? How much decoration do I want? All of those kind of things. We already have a video on the channel where we dive into how I plan a theme. So we're not so much going to look at that here, but more so we're going to take these points and consider the layouts that I'm going to include. For this, I'm just going to flip back and set up a little kind of micro collection for myself or just a little temporary list that we're putting in here. And this one can act as a checklist for the things that I want to set up. So taking my list, I know that having an actions list was something that I liked. So I'm gonna be setting up an actions list. And I can also note underneath this that I want it to be fully filled in before the month starts. I enjoy having a cover page, so that one's still gonna be there because making your journaling enjoyable means you're more likely to do it. So I'm not gonna take it out because it doesn't have a function because I like having a cover page. If you enjoy putting things into your journal, even if they don't seem to be super functional, that's totally fine your journal. Do what you want to do. While I enjoyed the faux Dutch door cover page, I'm not going to specify that as something that needs to happen. It's more so just there in my back pocket if the need arises. Now I did like the overview of the cycle at a glance or the kind of monthly log, but I noted that I wanted to have better use of space on that, so probably making the boxes taller. As noted, I wanted to have something to distinguish between releases and events, so color coding might be necessary. And then after this, I want to have a work out outputs layout, but it needs to be a little bit different. Given the other needs that I've specified here, those ones being related to work outputs, I think that I might actually have to have multiple spreads rather than just the one so that I can also end up having that kind of content release calendar. It won't be as big as the overview because it doesn't need to capture events, but I'm thinking to fit everything in, I'm still going to need to have more than just two pages. Also going to note that I like the idea of an Alastair method by date and I liked having things filled in before the cycle started. That's a pretty common theme though. Outside of that I did note that I wanted something to do an end of quarter wrap up 
but I do already have a space in my journal related to this. This one's back at the start of journal setup. So after my reflection pages, we have the quarterly reset here. So I can start to plan on here rather than putting something in my cyclic pages. While this process does seem fairly involved, it doesn't have to be quite as in-depth as I've done it. And I'd love to know what does your process for setting up for the new month look like? Do you ask these kind of questions of yourself or do you do something a little different? I like to tweak and change my layouts every single month, whereas I know some people stick with the exact same layouts month after month. If you wanted to see more about this before the pen planning process, then the playlist at the top is where it's at. Or if you wanted to check out my new podcast, then the first episode is down the bottom. Click or tap on either of those and I'll see you over there.